Hello everyone, MechFrog here. With things hopping for Battletech lately, I am more frequently getting asked about how and why I paint mechs the way I do. I think this is the perfect opportunity to go through the process for anyone who wants to get into painting the big stompy mechs. I'm going to be very clear as to why I do something, so if you're looking for a deliberate explanation for each step, this video could be for you. Step 1. Prep. Right out of the box, your standard CGL mech is about 90% ready to paint. Occasionally, on specific mechs, mold lines can be found that need to be scraped off with a hobby knife or flat edge tool. These lines form as a result of the two injection molding plates coming together not quite flush. While it's not crucial to get them all, they can be annoying later in the painting process as paints and washes can end up exaggerating the seam. You can paint the mechs on their bases or pry them off with a flat edge tool. It depends entirely upon how you want to do your basing. Since I 3D print my bases, I've pulled mine off and glued little bits of plastic sprue to the feet for easy holding while painting. As you practice, you're going to find a method that works best for you. A running theme in this video will be that there is no single method for painting a mech. At this point, my mechs are ready for priming. Priming is important because the plastic and the mechs are printed in is not going to be able to hang on to your standard model acrylic paint. Primer is different from a standard model acrylic because it is designed to grip the plastic. It is the foundation on which you can build up paint for the rest of the model. The color of primer largely depends upon personal preference or for specific more advanced painting techniques like Xenophil. It helps to have a black and white handy. If the base coat you've chosen for your mechs is a light color, you may want to go for white. For darker colors, black or gray works better. For actual priming, if you're just starting out, you can either use a brush on primer or a rattle can. Either work fine, just make sure you don't overdo it with the spray paint. The goal is to cover the model, but not obliterate the detail. Keep your distance from the model when spraying and dust it, don't drown it. If you're going to brush on your primer, I would recommend using a few drops of water or an airbrush full improver if you have it, to thin the paint a little bit. One of the most common mistakes new painters make is trying to do everything in one coat. That usually results in thick globs of paint that obscure detail. You're far better off thinning your paints and working up to the level of color you want in two to three layers. This preserves the detail of the model and reduces the likelihood of seeing brush strokes in the dried paint. There is no 100% ironclad rule for thinning a paint as sometimes it's necessary to thin more than others, but you will learn through trial and error what works for you. Step two, base coating. Once your mechs are primed, it's time for the base coat. As far as materials go, a basic set of hobby brushes will work just fine for most of your painting process. A painting tray is fine, but if you are someone who's frequently painting in very short bursts, you might want to invest in a wet palette. It will keep your paint from drying out while you're out walking the dog, shaving the cat, watering the children, whatever. As far as colors go, if you're planning on using a wash later, pick a base coat color slightly brighter than what you think you'll want for your final look. This is because most washes will darken the base coat noticeably. You can always come back and do touch-ups, but this is why it's a good idea to do a test model before starting the process for an entire regimen. Again, thin your paint. It's much better to do two or three coats with the base coat than one thick coat that will obscure your detail later. Don't panic if you see the primer through on the first run, especially if you're trying to do a lighter color over a darker primer. Patience is key. A quick note on Army Painter Speed Paints, Citadel Contrast Paints, and others. These are great and work really well on mechs. Just make sure you use a white or an off-white base coat before adding your speed paint. And, by the way, give it plenty of time to dry afterward. Up to 24 hours for those Army Painter Speed Paints. Step 3. Wash. Once your base coat is dry, you can take things in a few directions. If you're going to go for a single color, you can move on to a wash. If you're going to do a camo, that step would come before the wash. For now, let's assume our mech here is going to be just this standard color. The next step is to do a wash. The purpose of adding a wash, like this Army Painter version, is to fill in the little gaps and crevices and create a shading effect on the model. When dried, it'll help your mech look more realistic. So much of the model painting is using dark and light elements to create the illusion of depth where there might only be less than a millimeter of actual difference. Choosing a wash color can require some trial and error depending upon the look you're going for. A standard black wash using Citadel's Nuln Oil, for example, or an Army Painter equivalent will work for most needs. 
give the mech an all over wash, or if you want to be very deliberate, you can try brushing it into little crevices. But for a beginner, an all over is fine. Step four, dry brushing. Sometimes new painters are wary of trying techniques like dry brushing, but of all the more quote unquote advanced techniques, dry brushing is quite accessible and can help your mech stand out on the battlefield. Once the wash is dry, you're gonna to wanna to pick up a paint that accents the base coat. If you used a dark wash, it might be as easy as using the base coat paint again. If it's not that dark, you're gonna to want to choose a color that accents the base. What that means, sometimes, is using a lighter color of the base coat. There are guides out there to suggest color, but in general, the idea is to make the raised edges of the mech lighter in contrast with the darker nooks and crannies. You can use dry brush paint, though regular paint is just fine. For this, you do not wanna do any thinning. Once you have your paint picked out, the next step is to use a brush that has some bulk to it, yet has soft bristles. There are specialized dry brushes created by companies like Army Painter, though if you are on a budget, you can use whatever you have available or even order a pack of cheap makeup brushes. The idea is to have a brush that can collect and hold the paint. If you need a functional cheap option, I'll include a link to a cheap set of brushes that worked for me in the comments section below. Once you have your brush in the paint, you'll want to have a surface on which you can work the paint into the bristles of the brush. Some people say paper towels aren't great and they use something like porcelain tile or glass or even a paint tray instead, but really it's up to you and your preferences. Most of the time I end up using just a paper towel. You'll want to work the paint into the brush, then glide it across the paper towel until it seems close to completely devoid of paint. How much you leave on the brush can have a big impact on the result. When you're ready, you're going to want to gently glide the brush across the edges of the mech where you want to gradually build up color. The key here is showing patience and not trying to rush it. It's up to you how heavy you want to go with it. With practice, you can sort out what works for you. When you're finished, there should be a difference between the outward edges and the nooks and crannies due to the combination of wash and dry brushing. Step 5. Detail Work now that you have your mech base coated, washed, and dry brushed, the next step is to add some detail work. How much detail you want to add is entirely up to you and the look you are going for for your mechs. Basic steps I would recommend for a beginner is to highlight the weapons with a color that sets them apart from the base color. Many people use metallic paints for this, though I know there are some out there who eschew the metallics entirely and prefer a solid color like Battleship Gray. I would suggest avoiding pure black or pure white as they tend to make the model look less realistic due to their intensity. If you want to use black, drop a little bit of gray into the mix so it's just slightly off for your black. For white, adding a little bit of light gray or a tan can help cut back on the intensity of that white. This is also a good time to do edge highlighting on panels so you want to stand out and didn't get enough love from the dry brushing. This is achieved using a thin brush and a paint just a little lighter than the shade of the panel you're painting. The edges that would be facing the light source of the mech, usually the sun from above, would get the highlighting. Other details worth trying out include chipping, wear and tear on the edges, unit markings, and of course, the cockpit glass. As a quote unquote eyes of the model, the cockpit is a natural focal point, so I'd suggest choosing colors that contrast with the rest of the mech in order to amplify it. My usual go-to colors include oranges, greens, blues, and depending upon the camo scheme. Denouement. There are some general tips I've collected that are good to keep in mind when painting your battle mechs. If it looks good to you, it looks good. Don't chase the opinions of others and don't beat yourself up if your final result doesn't look like another artist's work. We're all trying to get better at what we do. Next, don't be afraid to get creative with your basing. It can be really rough sometimes at the Battletech scale to get things to look like they fit but a good base can go a long way in setting your mechs apart from others in a great way. Next, don't feel constrained by camo schemes. If you wanna paint your Draconis Combine mechs pink with purple polka dots, go for it. This isn't 40K where you're going to take flack for painting your Blood Angels anything but red. Next up, if you do want to recreate the camo scheme for your favorite house, clan, or merc unit, there are some really great resources out there both on YouTube and the wider internet. One of my frequent resources is Camo Specs, which is a website repository for many of the unique paint schemes for Canon units. I'll include the link for it down in the comments below. 
Now finally, be creative, try out new things. If you want to test out paint jobs and you don't want to quote unquote ruin a mech in the process, consider trying out a scheme on a cheapo plastic D&D model or even a plastic toy soldier. When my younger son started out painting, I set him out on painting some cheap toy dragons I bought from Amazon. They were like five cents a piece. If you have any questions concerning specific techniques, keep in mind that there are many painting tricks that work on Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigmar models that are transferable directly to Battlemax. Take a look around YouTube and don't be afraid to experiment. I can also help field questions if you comment below, though I wouldn't describe myself as a painting expert. If you want to see the process for how I do camo on Max, check out the video linked above. Other than that, go out there and paint some Max. Take care and go make the world a slightly better place today and tomorrow.